Hello, Floss Tube. It's Nicole. It is Sunday, February 19th, 2023, and this is Floss Tube number 35. Welcome back to my channel. For everyone returning, I am so glad that you are coming back at, for another episode. And for everyone uh, who is brand new, thank you guys so much for uh, watching my videos, for subscribing, liking, all of that good stuff. Um, probably a broken record, but we're getting closer and closer to 100,000 subscribers all the time. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. I would so appreciate it. We're going to do some really fun things when I reach that milestone here. Um, it's been a pretty big week for us at uh, our house. We adopted a new puppy. So, uh, a lot of sleepless nights. He is not enjoying his crate at all. This is pretty normal. Um, oh, I got some weird stuff. Honestly, he likes to play with my hair too. Um, I know it's normal. I, it's not been that long since I've had a puppy, Odin's three, and we always intended to get him a, a friend close to his age because he likes to play. Um, he's still a little, I mean, he thought he was fun. The novelty has worn off though. He's like, oh, he's staying. <laughs> um, but, and he screeches like a howler monkey at night in his cake, in his kit, kennel, in his crate. Um, I was going to say cage, but kennel, crate, you know, not a cage. He acts like it's a cage. Uh, but, uh, the opportunity kind of arose, so we went ahead and adopted him. Uh, Brody is very elderly, and we, we kind of call him a cat with nine lives, but he keeps kind of getting sick and, and not doing too well, and then, you know, he's okay. Um, he also, I, I honestly, I didn't know. The other day, he didn't want to really get up or do anything, hardly ate anything, but then like eight, nine o'clock in the evening, he came and got a big drink of water. And then he's been running around all day. Like, I don't know. He might be on his ninth life, guys. I don't know. Uh, and I, I joke, but obviously, you know, everyone who has had an elderly older dog knows that you never know. You just never know. So we just enjoy every day with him, but new puppy, he, and he's completely indifferent. Um, I, I don't know if I've said here before. I know I've said in some videos, but Brody is going blind. We we kind of knew that already. You know, he kind of cloudiness in his eyes and things. He doesn't see great. He sometimes gets scared to come up the stairs from outside, especially like twilight or at nighttime when he, if he sees shadow or if Odin goes first. Um, and now Frank, Frank's the new puppy's name, by the way, we call him Frank the tank. He was the biggest of his litter. He's tiny, but, but anyway, um, if he sees them go, he'll go. Or if he sees, if he can follow me up the stairs, he will. He just doesn't see well, but we don't think he's hearing very well. Um, he gets lost out in the yard. He gets confused. We have to go rescue him. It, it is what it is. We, we have a doggy doggy daycare or something going on here. I will show you Frank if he comes around here. He has been. Come here. Come here. You want to show everybody how cute you are? Come here. Come here. I mean you. He's really chill and mellow. He has really pretty eyes. You're not so sure, right? The world is crazy. You really want to take a nap. I really worked with him this morning. Um, I watched a bunch of videos trying to get him to like his kennel, uh, doing treats and things, and, and it worked. I got him in the kennel, but only if I sat right outside the kennel with it shut and locked and everything. The minute I get up, it he he like is on the the door screeching. It's not fun at night. I put him in an enclosed playpen area last night, and because I just couldn't have him next to my bed anymore, I usually keep him in my room next to my bed, and I because I have gotten no sleep, and uh, I thought he slept. 
Uh, no. He was in bed with Ethan. <laughs> Ethan couldn't stand to leave him. He's really chill and mellow. This is why we think it's super funny that he does this at night, that he just screeches and acts crazy because this is how he is. I mean, he does like to romp around and play and he gets the zoomies and things, but uh, he's really chill and really mellow. Do really sweet. You don't want to give loves. He's not much of a kisser. He'll do it every once in a while, but not all the time. I scared him a little bit to go on an accident. So here's here's my little buddy. He's super, super sweet. He's a lot of hair, just like his brother, aren't ya? Odin, oh, you want to come here and say hi? He really doesn't because he's grumpy. Uh, he likes when we do our alone things together. Anyway, so that's kind of what's been going on here. I thought I would show him. Um, I showed him in my Friday card making live, so thought I would show my new baby. Okay, today I have some um, whips slash sows. They're all, I think all sows today that I'm going to be sharing that I worked on this week. Um, no finishes or FFOs this week. I just did not get around to it. I had a lot of work, um, a lot of Frank, and a lot of dealing with all of that. Uh, we also did some, we had a family night, Peyton and uh, her fiance Jordan brought over their little puppy and we had like, a, we had dinner and we played with the dogs and we, we're a dog loving, pet loving family. Um, and my oldest son, he has cats. He's gone a lot during the day. And so he just, he didn't want to get a puppy because he can't be there. So he has cats. They're the same age as Odin. They're three. Um, but he he's a huge pet lover too. He loves all of them. He'd have all of the pets if he could. So we, we all got together Friday night and had a, a fun thing. And then they played one of their favorite board games when they were little. Um, my mom had my brother and I's version of the game Trouble. And she gave it to me when we moved and that because the kids don't want the new version that you can buy at the store. They want the OG. You can't hardly read it anymore because you've pressed the, the thing that makes the dice hit around and it's kind of doled the dome uh, on that game. <laughs> but that's the one they want to play. And oh my gosh, they were hilarious playing it. They were so funny. It's really lovely hearing like your adult children and Ethan is close enough to an adult. Hearing them play a game and just the crap talking. <laughs> oh, it was funny. And my daughter is the worst, I want to say worst loser, but she is the worst winner ever too. I mean, she just, she's so highly competitive in all that she does. Um, but yeah, it was hilarious. They, But they all were doing it. And it, it was really funny. So anyway, that that's what we've been doing. Thought I'd give a little update. I don't think I have given much of one recently. So anyway, back to what I was saying. No FFOs, no finishes. Uh, I do have like some sal and whip type stuff to share. I want to share what I'm going to do upcoming. I have a few things I want to talk about here before we get started. And then... Um, I want to talk about Chantal's 141 Stitchy Retreat coming this fall. I've got some haul things that I have purchased, and then we will do some giveaways. So uh, the first thing I want to talk about is my Facebook group. Thank you to everyone who has joined. I know a lot of you have joined because you've jumped on the more chocolate bunnies sal that I'm doing. And I am so glad to see you there. Super, super fun. Uh, I have updated a few things in my group. I made the rules much easier to read. I didn't realize. <laughs> so on my end, they are listed out by number and they were really easy to read. I didn't realize when you click the rules when you're going to post. So you make sure that you're following the group rules. In your Whenever you join a group, make sure you're following the rules. But I didn't realize it was all clumped together and it was really hard to see what was what. So I went in and fixed that this week. Yay. Um, also, I have two moderators, so which really helps. And in, they approve most, most of the requests to join the group, to be honest. They are both so fantastic. So um, a huge thanks to Karen and Shari for just helping me out. It really does take some of that off of me. Um, just, and it makes sure that, that people get approved 
much faster than what I sometimes was guilty of doing just because, you know, I would forget. So with three of us, there's always somebody making sure. Um, when you go to join, there is a link in the description. Please make sure you answer the questions. Uh, some of the answers lately, I, I'm not sure if people are maybe not joining the correct group. So if you get declined with feedback, that means we declined you and you need to give a little more information or maybe you didn't answer the question correctly or agree to the group rules. So definitely look for that. Um, if you got declined and you think you shouldn't have been, um, you can always try again uh, or shoot me an email or something. <laughs> Let me know. But um, generally, it's just because if you just hit, you know, that you want to join and you don't answer the questions and you don't agree to the group rules, you do get declined. Um, and that is a safety thing. We had a couple of spam things. I've tried to, I think I fixed how that was happening, I hope. But it's just to keep it a safe community that's for stitchers. That's all. So um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that, I guess. Um, oh, no linking. I do want to address this in my face. I like. I probably have addressed this before, but I want to address it again. The reason I don't allow linking and I do delete it when I see it, I, I'm sure I've missed some, is because I do not want to police what gets linked. Um, I also, so if it gets deleted, even if it's something that would, was probably helpful or something I would have added a link for, please understand that it is an extension of my business. This is an extension of, of kind of what I'm doing. I don't want to worry about links to things that might not be okay. Um, again, it's just a safety thing. It's just for my group. Um, I don't know what other people do and that's fine. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is what we're doing in my group. So if you see it, the links are only going to come from myself, Karen or Shari. Um, and I think that's, oh, the linking and then charts. I did have to delete a couple of people who were sharing their update updated photos uh, for the more chocolate bunnies, Sal, because they showed quite a lot of the chart. And because this is, well, anytime you show the chart, I'm going to delete it, even if it was free. And that is because I don't know if they're free. Sometimes the charts that are called free on Pinterest are not free. When I post a free chart in the group, like a link to it, it is because I went and looked or I know for a fact that it is a free chart. It's really kind of disappointing um, to see all of the charts that are on Pinterest that are not free charts, even though somebody put them up and goes free chart. No, it's not. Um, which I know a lot of you already know that. So just know this, retake your photo, use the cover sheet or just your stitching and please share it again. It is nothing personal. I know you probably didn't even think about it. It's not a big deal. I just want, don't want anyone to be, you know, upset if that happens. I just try to really make it across the board. I've tried to make it as fair as possible and we definitely want to be fair to the designers. Okay, next thing, lots of comments um, on past videos, really old videos. In fact, I got a comment on like, I want to say my first floss tube, one of the first ones, at least if it wasn't the first one, leaving a comment to win the prize from that video from July. Um, I think I mentioned this last week or the week before, please make sure you're looking to see when that video uh, went up. Bef I mean, definitely watch it, but before you try to submit a comment to win the prize, um, I give away the previous week or previous floss tube if I haven't done it weekly uh, in the next floss tube. So always look to see if it's the latest. All my floss tube videos are in a floss tube playlist. 
Um, I just don't want anyone to be disappointed and be like, oh, what happened? And the way you know that I read your comment and you were considered for the giveaway is if I don't reply, if you didn't have a question or something that I would have replied to, if it is hearted by me, the, the comment is hearted by me, it means I read it and you were considered in the giveaway. If the comment comes after I've already picked, even if my floss tube isn't up yet, uh, you weren't considered. Uh, and that's because sometimes I film earlier than what the floss tube goes up or the last few weeks I'm filming late. So I... I went right before I went live and made sure I had done the comments. And so I just kind of wanted to give you my process for how that happens. There were a few spam comments, but not a ton. And I think I reported and blocked everybody. Uh, please remember, I only announce giveaways here and I ask you to email me at the email in the description. I am not gonna come after, I'm not gonna leave you a comment and say, contact me. I'm not gonna say, contact me through Telegram. It is not me. Even if it looks like it's me, that is not going to be me. I announce it here at the end of my video in the giveaway portion of this video, and then you need to email me to claim your prize. And the other thing I want to talk about, I was going to talk about this at the end, but I'm going to do it now since we're doing announcements. I had a few comments say that one of my last videos or a couple of the last floss two videos had an inordinate amount of ads. And I was like, I've not changed anything. Everything is the same. And I was a little bit, I don't know. It, it was kind of a lot of comments like that. So I've, I do want to just say, number one, my channel is monetized. And yes, I do click the button to say add, add, add ads to my videos. It is monetized. This is my, well, floss tubes, not my full-time job, but video content creation is my full-time job. Um, paper crafting is my full-time job. And so I do monetize my channel. There are going to be ads. If you don't want any ads at all, I highly recommend you, uh, subscribing to YouTube Premium. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not subscribed to that. I just click past them. I do notice that sometimes some videos I watch have more ads than others. I don't really care that much. So that's just me. However, because I got more of those comments than what I normally did do, I did go in and look I do click the button to add ads to my video, okay? So yes, it is me who does that, but I don't pick the ads and I don't pick how many. Um, I let YouTube pick that and I didn't realize because a couple of them I've looked at said, we added two ads to your video and I was like, oh, that's fine, that's okay. If you're watching an hour long TV show, you can expect to have a couple of ad breaks, right? Um, the videos that you guys complained about had 12 ads each that YouTube chose to add in. So I went through and deleted all but one or one or two mid video ads for those videos. I don't know why it does that sometimes and it doesn't do it other times. So I, I'm hoping that that's a happy medium for, for everyone, but it, it did take me a little bit to figure out. And please have some grace with the video content creators here on YouTube. This is free content for the viewer. Um, not all of us know all of the ins and outs. In fact, I would probably wager that the majority of people don't know every little in and out of every part of YouTube. Um, and so sometimes it just takes a little digging into, it takes some time. It did take me a little bit of time to figure that out. And then I ended up going back through several videos and I had to go in and manually, manually remove them from the video so that there weren't so many. So if that happens again, um, you can let me know, but I am going to try to uh, monitor that and check it a little closer when I upload the videos. Okay, as always, timestamps will be listed below. So it's easy to pick what you want to watch. And we're going to start with Q&A first. Janice wanted to know what size was the Hive rules board that I shared last week. I shared quite a few FFOs. It was 27 and a half inches long and eight inches wide. I do want to say I stitched mine on 25 count antique white 
uh, Lugana, it will look different if you stitch on a smaller count. There's because it already I I felt like it had a nice border around because it's a huge board. It's from Hobby Lobby. You can go back and check out that video if you didn't see it. Um, but please keep in mind what you stitch on or how many mats you want to put on it, um, you know, to make your stitch fit. Janet, what's a floss toss? A floss toss is when you take the floss that, like, let's say you want to change the floss, the called for floss from a pattern. So you take it and you lay it on the fabric that you're thinking of using and you see if it's going to look okay. It's a great way to see if you think everything is going to jive. Um, probably the best way to make sure that a certain floss color will look okay is to do a few stitches up near the edge. Uh, but a floss toss is a great way to see if you think the floss will look good on the fabric. Leslie, what did you mount your hive rules piece on before mounting it to the paddle? Is it sticky board? And if so, where did you get a piece that large? Uh, it is sticky board and I should have really explained that better. So I apologize. It is sticky board. It's the biggest, longest sticky board you can get, but it's still not long enough. I pieced it together on the back. So I pieced two pieces together. Let's just do it this way. So I pieced them together, but I took like little extra pieces on the back to secure those two together. And then on the long piece, the seam in the center, if you put your stitch right on there, you're going to see the seam through it. I put two... And I would have done this anyway, even if it was one long piece of sticky board. I put two layers of batting on top. I like my stitches to have a little puffiness to them. I just think it looks nicer. Um, do what you want. You don't have to do it the way I do it. But I put two layers of batting on top and then my stitch piece, and you're never going to see that seam. Um, let's see. Kitten and stitches. What 28 or 32 count even weave would you suggest that closely matches the color of your fabric choice for Bountiful? It may not be exact. Um, the Bountiful color I'm using is Milk and Honey. So it's, it's a little bit lighter. But I would tell you if I was picking a 28 count fabric, I would use 28 count Mushroom. That is what I stitched. Um... It's still here because it needs to be FFO'd. This is 28 count mushroom and it is a fantastic basic. I love it and I think that this stitch would look amazing on this. Um, and Mary says, can you show us how to add pellets or walnut shells to a project? And yes, I will. I do have that slated to do a video um, or a video tutorial. Okay, um, let's go ahead and skip on to the sows and whips portion. Um, all sows that I worked on this week. Let's go ahead and start with the one that I have been working on. I did not uh, bring in the paper for it. So I will put a graphic here on the screen. Uh, it's the Love Potion Sal from Fat Quarter Shop. This is their paid for mystery sal. Week three was released on Friday. This is, let's move my needle. This is weeks one and two that I am caught up now completely. Um, well, I say completely. <coughs> I will say the thing I don't like about this mystery sal, <coughs> excuse me, and the reason I've been stitching a little slower, um, I actually do have all the pieces or all, all the pieces of it, but I can't share them. So I'm trying to stitch along with you guys, but here's what I'm doing. I didn't want a seam where you could obviously tell because this was this was week one and then week two. I didn't want a seam right through the, the bottle. And so I stitched this and then I moved over and stitched this during week two. I had started the top tippy top of this, but I went ahead and did the cork. I, and then I stitched all of this together because I think we can, we'll be okay here. There's a little bit of a heart that you could see in the week two, I'd, and then it'll go into the week four. I opted not to start that heart. I will just stitch that as part of week four. And then um, I will work on this portion of week three We'll see how much I get done. I, I'm going to take a look and see what part of this... Um, but by the time I show this to you, week four will be out. So just to be completely honest with you guys, 
I'm going to stitch my bottle all at one time just because I think the floss looks better that way. But I, I love this. This is stitched on 36 count milk and honey. And I love it. Called for floss one strand over two. Um, it's beautiful. I'm really looking forward to showing or getting that one finished. Of course, I have a huge finish pile now. It's funny, you think you're never going to finish these that are finish stitching them to make a finish. And then all of a sudden you have piles of finishes that you need to FFO. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Let me put my needle back in here. Okay. On to the back portion. Okay, I think I showed... Oh, and I forgot to tell you guys, I'm adding my hashtags to the screen, mostly because it really helps with my description section, keeping it nice. That was the Be Mine Sal. All right. Not adding extra hashtags because I think the description only allows three hashtags and I usually have something else. So anyway. Chantal of 141 Design is hosting the Mad for Plaid Sal. This is the awesome hands-on design Mad for Plaid pattern. I will say I am really liking stitching this. I'm stitching this on 32 count charcoal gray Lugana. Uh, here's where I'm at. I am a little bit behind. But I did finish my whole row of strawberries and I'm starting on the row of baskets. And I'm planning on working on this a little bit this evening. So hopefully I will have a lot more progress to show for that next week. I am using all the called for Cosmo floss. I did get all my floss put on floss drops. The acrylic floss drops I use are linked down below and you can find them in my Amazon shop. And then I'm also just use these rings to hold them on but it works fantastic. In fact, I just got the last missing color of Cosmo Floss and it was only missing because I accidentally ordered the wrong color to begin with. Oops, it happens, right? Okay, then the last thing I worked on, it started this last week. Thank you to everyone who joined my Stitch With Me Live is my uh, More Chocolate Bunny Sal. We're stitching the hands-on design More Chocolate Bunnies chart. Let me grab it out. And I finished week one and week two. So week one is the bunnies and then like the little greenery underneath. Week two is Life Needs More. Week three is Chocolate Bunnies and week four is the carrots. You can cut and stitch what you want. I know I've seen some of you done, some of you have moved on uh, to, you know, more weeks because you're just enjoying stitching it. Stitch however you want. I'm stitching mine on the called for 32 count Aspen Linen by Weeks Dye Works using the called for Sulky Threads 1 over 2 and I love it. Now. I love it, but the bunnies gave me some problems. I did a lot of ripping out. So let me see. And I don't know if you can tell on screen here, but I posted a photo as well that the bunny noses are actually not white, which is what the chart calls for. It's the only change I've made, at least the only change I've made so far. I changed the noses to pink. Several months ago, um, Binzi Design, I had made an order and they actually sent me a few extra things and one of them was some silky floss. And so in my kit from them, I had this color, which is, I'll put it in the description. It's uh, 7121115 and it's a beautiful pink and I used this to stitch my bunny noses. I did still do their toes in white, but the little pink noses just were super sweet. Do I think you have to do them in pink? No. I had this. I didn't have to make an extra purchase or anything. So I went ahead and uh, did the bunny noses in pink. But I'm loving 
I'm loving it. I'm looking so forward to FFOing it. And that does lead me to a question I have gotten quite a bit. And that is, do I have, is the, the paddle from Chantal ready? Uh, can we see it? So I did talk to her last week. She sent me the prototype. If I approve it, it should be available pretty quickly. If I need to make any changes, it still should be available pretty quickly. We still have plenty of time until, you know, we get to the finishing portion, but we just want to make sure size and scale. So stay tuned. I will share that as soon as possible and when she has a link and everything for that. I have noticed that a lot of the um, paper charts for more chocolate bunnies have been restocked places. So if you want to jump in and you want the paper chart, it does come with the little white buttons that you put on the bunny tails. I have not done that yet. Um, I want to wait till I get my piece finished and ironed and then I will add my bunny tails. Uh, but it does come with those. If you get the PDF chart, you can use whatever you want. You can, you know, stitch a bunny tail if you want to, if you don't want to, you know, add a button or you use a little pom-pom or find your own buttons. Um, I am using the called for sulky floss. The floss kit, uh, Kathy at Hands-On Design had restocked it. I have not looked to see if it's still in stock. So if you're looking for it, you might check. And I think that is all I have for my stitching this week. Not a lot of different things to share, but I was happy with the progress I made. I had quite a bit of stitching on the Love Potion and More Chocolate Bunnies, obviously at the new start and doing that whole top row. So I was happy with my progress. Let's see, I am going to have a new start this week and then I, I'm gonna show you another project that I have kitted up and then um, I'm not gonna talk about the Bountiful Stitch Along this week. I will share that next because I think it's going, they're going to release part of it early because they reached that what their, um, their first goal or whatever. Um, I have it already kitted. This was one of the choices for my spring sal, which is the Cherry Hill Stitchery Hope pattern. I am going to be stitching mine on 37 count legacy right well you guys you just hold up hold on i suppose i can't remember yeah it is russian tea cake by legacy sorry russian tea cake that is what i'm going to stitch hope on i already have it cut and zigzagged and ready to stitch. I have, I also prepped all my floss this week. So I've got my floss all on my floss drops. It's all DMC with one week's dye works. And I actually had lost my little tat, uh, tag for this. I had this, this is left over. Um, so I just put it on a floss drop as well. So I am going to be starting that this week because I will be sharing a finishing tutorial for this one as well kind of close to when I share the more chocolate bunnies so I wanted to share that and I also wanted to share that Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher and I are going to be stitching the with thy needle and thread the rabbit and the rose starting March 1st ish or something it is not going to be like a super organized you must stitch this 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 and this but join us if you would like um this is the beautiful chart I absolutely love it um I'm not using the called for fabric on this I had shared in my Facebook group a trip to my local needlework shop LNS is the abbreviation for that uh it's called Heart's Desire in Wichita Kansas they do mail order, so I often will put their number and email, or you can find them on Facebook and contact them. Um, if you want them to kit something up and mail it out to you, they do that. But I had shared a picture of that finished into a pillow. And I asked what fabric she used, and she did use the 37 count Russian tea cake by Legacy. So that is what I got. Mine's a little wrinkly because 
it just it's been in my bag but that's what I'm going to use so mine is not going to be this dark it's going to be lighter more like the photo that I shared in that group super pretty oh and I don't know if you can tell look at the bunny tail it's all fuzzy um my LNS I also prepped all my floss for this uh, my it's a lot of DMC. I think it's all DMC except for the uh, whisper, and that's what you use for the bunny tail. It has nice texture to it, and my LNS had that, so I was able to just kind of kit it all up, easy peasy. So I'm excited to start that as well. Just something fun. Join in. I'm sure we'll we'll have a hashtag. I will have that for you guys next week. I need to talk to her. So. Um, that is it for upcoming sales or stitching. I don't have anything for free charts to share this week, but I do want to talk about Chantal's stitchy retreat. Um, Chantal's 141 retreat is September 8th, 9th, and 10th. And Kathy of Hands-On Design is the guest designer. Super excited. I am going to be there registration for everyone who's been asking opens Friday, February 24th at noon Eastern. Um, and I have a link in the description. Excuse me a minute before all my bags go sliding off. They are not participating. Uh, I have a link. Chantal is going to have a website soon. She still will have her Etsy shop, but I'm very excited that she's going to be having her own website. But that is where you're going to purchase your registration for the retreat. Um, there is a countdown there now, but when it goes live on Friday, the page will open. But right now it just shows a countdown. So I will have a link to it down below. Bookmark it. Make an alert on your phone or use a friend. I always have to phone a friend. <laughs> she knows who she is to help me remember things. Um, however... Uh, if you want to come to that retreat, definitely uh, make a little note of that. Super, super excited. Um, What is up next? Oh, let's do a little haul. So I'm wanting to go in the order that I have my stuff. I have a lot of club stuff I got from Fat Quarter Shop this week. So I got my Country Cottage Needleworks Big City Christmas Toy Store Toy Story pattern. Have I stitched on any of these? No, I really need to get to these because I love them. I haven't got back to it since my 12 by 12. So I'm going to stick this in my bag, but this is available now. I have a link to it in the description if you want to join in. They're super cute. I am stitching mine as one piece. Maybe we'll have some progress next week. I don't know. I'll try. Uh, let's see what else I got. I also got my Stitching with the Housewives April month to month, and I get the pattern and the floss. I got, have I quilted? No. I got my Fat Quarter Shop Designer Mystery Block of the Month. Block, what, nine? It is block nine. I need to get on it. Uh, love it. Absolutely love it. That came. I did get, so I joined this year the Fat Quarter Shop Classic Color Works Floss Fix. And I got, and they're doing them in alphabetical, so they're not going to be like color coded. So I got the next grouping of these. Just, it's really nice to add to my floss collection. So beautiful, really beautiful. What is this one called? baby blanket. Oh, it totally looks like baby blanket too. So I got my floss fix and you there, I did look before I went on and I believe you can join sometimes it goes in and out of being available. You know, uh, some people drop out or don't pay or whatever. And so, um, it was available at the time of me filming this. Um, let's see. Oh Yeah. Um, from Lindy's Stitches, I purchased a couple more fabrics. So I got, and they're 40 count. I've never done 40 count, but I bought a couple to try. I mean, I'm doing 36 and I love it. How much harder can 40 be? I say. I got a 40 count blush. I thought this was so pretty for spring. So got that. Kind of added, I'm in all about the spring colors right now. 
got that one and I got 40 count vintage country mocha, which we all know is a fantastic basic. So yeah, you can see it a little bit. Beautiful. So I got those. Um, this is, well, I'm just going to say these first because they're on top. Neither of these bundles are available, but both of these are from Primrose Cottage. I got the Valentine's bundle and the, I want to say it right in case they restock, Honeybee bundle. And I bought these bundles from their shop. I am using some of the Valentine's. I know it's not available and I don't think they can restock this one to do my drum finish for uh, Big Hearted, my Big Hearted Tiny Town because I thought some of the small heart prints were perfect for that. Um, and then the bee fabric, because I'm all about everything bee. Definitely check out their bundles. They're curated to, they're not like one collection. She pulls, mix and matches, or they mix and match and pull fabrics and put them together. So it's really fun, completely, you know, custom curated fabric bundles. Uh, and I just wanted to kind of shout that out. Always, I love to watch their lives because they show them. Um, and I just purchased them right from right there during their Thursday morning live um, because I think they sold out pretty quick. The other thing I purchased this week, um, I did I purchased some pat charts from Hands On Design. I have been wanting this one forever. This is the Block Party Snow. I want to do one of these finishes. I think they're amazing. You guys know I love snowmen. N am I going to stitch this right away? No. Did I need to, to buy it right now? No. But I was purchasing something else, and so I went ahead and just picked them up, you know, to make my shipping worth it. That's what that's what I'm going to go with. Um, I also picked up the Buzz block party because I love all the honeybees and I do want to add this to my bee stitching for this summer uh, or spring summer. I thought it was so cute. But what I went to buy, Jessica the Sweetwater Stitcher for her Flossiversary is doing a fun sal and she's going to do the block party mend. And I think that maybe is this next week. I should have looked before I went, did my video. I'm so sorry. I think so. I will post about it on social media. I will post, I'm still auditioning fabric for this, but I will post it so you can see what I'm going to use. I am very excited to get started. And uh, sorry, I was looking for my dog. And I cannot wait. So I think it'll be very, very cute. I'm going to keep this in my craft room, of course, but um, I just wanted to stitch her along and support her um, on her one year floss anniversary. It's very fun. And it really got me thinking that I want to do something for mine, which doesn't come up until July, but I'm going to announce something before that um, so that we can all do something together. It probably won't be anything brand new. I say that, but we'll, we shall see, uh, but we'll do something fun. I'll definitely try to make it a fun thing. And maybe we'll be celebrating my 100,000 subscribers. Who knows? Okay. Um, the last thing I got is from Salt and Pepper Stitching, which I love. I love Emily's patterns. Uh, she posted this and I went and bought it immediately. Words to live by. Beautiful. I love one color stitching. And these just, these are something you can keep up year round. I don't have tons of that. I have lots of seasonal. So this is really something I would like to add to my home decor. Plus it really just kind of matches my vibe. So I love this. Um, I love the sentiment. I love, I love everything about this. So I uh, purchased this. It came out this last week. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and move on to giveaway our stitchy mail and giveaways. For stitchy mail, um, got a little card from Jessica in the mail. Thank you. I got a really fun interactive card from, oh gosh, 
Oh, yeah, that was the protector page. Uh, Jane sent me this fun card, and it actually has all these little opening windows. This is a, a die from Hero Arts, which is super fun. So thank you so much, Jane. And then um, Nan sent asked if she could send me an extra pattern she had of Mad for Plaid. So um, she sent me this darling card and she also sent the Mad for Plaid pattern and that is going to be in my giveaways this week. So Nan, thank you so much. All right. That is it for Stitchy Mail. I do know there's something at the post office, but I didn't get there to get it. So that'll be in next week's. Um, giveaways from Floss Tube 33 that are unclaimed, just one. And that's the Primrose Cottage 1776. That went to Kimberly Miller. So Kimberly, um, I think I probably will give you one more week to claim that. If it's not claimed by next week, I will pick a new winner. Um, and then, yes, that's how it goes. I'm sorry. I had to think about that. And then last week's winners. So I think everybody else has claimed him. Yes. Love that. Um, I did just notice I got a couple of emails. So not everything has been sent out. Most things have. Sorry, I had to tell the alarm to quit, go, quit going off. Um last week's giveaway winners. So, um, email winners, please email me if you see your name and if it's your comment that you see up on the screen, I put your comment up on the screen directly from the random comment picker that I use. I screenshot it right then and there and I put it up on the screen because sometimes names are the same. And at the, when I first started floss tubes, some people thought they won and it wasn't them and it was a whole thing. And it's easier if you see your comment on the screen and you're like, there's, you know, 10 Janes that left a comment, you know, it's yours. Uh, so anyway, if you see your name, email me at the email in the description. Nicole, no, I don't know what it is. It's a different email. I have a separate email for this. So it's easy for me to find because my other inbox is a disaster. Um, email at the email in the description and let me know what you won. Um, so I don't have to go back and look. I have quite a few different things that are given away and I can't always remember. So if you let me know, hey, I heard my name and I won this, give me your address and I mail it out. Okay, so number one from last week was the Fat Quarter Shop Be Mine pattern. Thank you, Fat Quarter Shop, for sending this. This goes to Debbie Damagle. Debbie, if that is your comment, please email me at the address in the description. Number two from last week, the January stackables goes to Karen Pang. Karen, if he, that is you, please email me. And the Fat Quarter Shop Chicken Club Cornelius goes to Heidi Buskey. So please email me and I will get those out to you ASAP. Um, and congratulations to everyone. This week, I have three giveaways for you. Please be a US resident. Please be over 18. I need to ask for your address to mail it to you. Please like, subscribe, and answer the question if you have been following some of your favorite designers and you have seen what they're going to be bringing out for Nashville Market, which here is the first weekend, I believe, or thereabouts in March, if you have seen some of the awesome things they have for us, let me know what you're most excited about in the comments. Um, in case some of us haven't seen certain things, we can go look for it. I will tell you my top two at the moment is the um, heart and hand little, oh, is it called Honey Tiny Town? It's the bee-themed tiny town. Of course it is. And of course I want that. Uh, I've already uh, requested it from my LNS. Uh, that one and um, Primrose Cottages, uh, I'd rather be stitching, part of their bee series, which I absolutely adore and love. I cannot wait. That's probably going to be the first thing I stitch 
honestly, from Nashville market release. Uh, there's lots and lots of good things coming out, but let me know what you're most excited about. Okay. This week, if you are interested, please leave the numbers you're interested in. If you're only interested in one, put the number one, don't write out one, the number one. No hashtags, please. Um, if you're interested in all of them, put one, two, three. Don't put all, don't put giveaway um, and answer the question. And if you haven't seen anything and you don't, you know, don't care, that's okay too. It's just, I know a lot of us kind of follow our favorite designers and just let us know what you're most excited about or what you think you'll stitch first. Number one is hands-on design mad for plaid. If you would like to stitch along and you don't have the pattern because I know it was sold out lots of places, put a number one in the comments. Number two from Fat Quarter Shop. Thank you so much Fat Quarter Shop for donating this. This is the Lady Claws pattern. If you would like to add this, if you have Santa or you have Rudolph and you would like to add this to there or you just want to stitch her, uh, put a number two in the comments. And number three is the Fat Quarter Shop Sweetheart Ornaments. They did Christmas ornaments. They did Sweetheart Ornaments. I would imagine we'll see some more before the year is over. These are super, super cute. I really love these. So put a number three. So one, two, or three. Okay, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful coming week. Get some stitching in, get some creating in. Please uh, join me tomorrow night, uh, February 20th at 7.30 p.m. Central Time for my next Stitch With Me. Whether you're stitching more chocolate bunnies or not, if you just want to come hang out and chat all things stitchy, come hang out with us. We'd love to have you there. Um, it, it'll be fun. I love the Stitch With Me's. I do have a link to this this coming Stitch With Me down in the description. Um, they all are all scheduled, so definitely come hang out with me if you have a time and have a moment. Uh, until next week, I will uh, see you later and stitch on. Bye, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new floss tube stitching or quilting video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.